Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining to this class. So we are from the Indonesia. Uh, we want to talk about the GPU pass-through in the OpenStack uh, for high-performance computing. Uh, before that, my name is Saputra, or uh, commonly my friend call me Ari. I'm from Bogor, Indonesia, and we are uh, built my own company, the namely is uh, Imtech with Aria. Uh, I'm also the OpenStack and Open Infra Indonesia user group organizer. Okay, that's Ari Lentos is my handle. You can connect to me in the social media and then my email and my uh, personal blog. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Aji Arya. I am originally from Borneo Island. Is a big island in Indonesia, and currently, professionally, I'm working as CTO in Imtech. We built Imtech uh, as a system integrator company. Me and Ari founded it. And here is my contact. If you have any questions uh, regarding these presentations, you can contact me on Telegram or you can email me at aria at openinfra.it. Yeah. Uh, this is the agenda we will cover. The first one is why we need the GPU and then GPU port approach and then virtual GPU and GPU pass-through comparison. And then you can see the how to configure the GPU pass-through in the OpenStack as well. And then the HPC software that uh, you can use for the network load. Okay, before we go to the main topic, uh, we will, I, will, I will explain the, about the GPU. GPU is the stand for the graphical processing unit. Uh, normally, they born, they born for the rendering graphical to the monitor, but commonly GPU can use also for the processing the data. What kind of data or the workload can use or utilize the GPU. Uh, the first one is the 3D computing and visualization. And then the other one, the hype now is the AI and data science. Other one is the high performance computing that will be included in this uh, session. Okay, this is the GPU approach. Uh, if you want to use GPU in the OpenStack, we have to choose the, the approach. The first one is the GPU virtualization, or, or we call it the VGPU or the virtual GPU. Uh, okay. In one GPU, you can install the virtual GPU software. Uh, basically, you can NVIDIA software. And then you have the virtual GPU can the, uh, assign to the instance. And the other one, besides the virtual GPU, you can use the GPU pass-through or we call it the GPU PT or PCI pass-through. Uh, one GPU in the Nova hypervisor compute on OpenStack, it can be only used for one the instance. It's exclusive. And then uh, this is the advantage and the disadvantage if we use the virtual GPU. The first one for the virtual GPU, we manageable via host group for allocating resource and demand. And then, of course, uh, improve efficiency of GPU usage because you can share one GPU to the other instance. And then the advantage is the device management only on the host compute itself. Okay, how about the cons or the disadvantage for the virtual GPU. The first one, you only can use the vendor-specific driver, like a Citrix, Hypervisor, KVM, Vsphere, Windows Hyper-V, and, and so on. And then the second one is subscription license model. You need to pay subscription to the NVIDIA if you want to share your one GPU to the many instances. The question, if we don't 
pay the subscription, can we still use the virtual GPU? The answer is yes, but you will, the, your performance will degrade if you running virtual GPU without the license. That's why if you want to use the virtual GPU, you need to buy the license to the NVIDIA. And then this is the second one. This is that the method what we choose in our production. We use the GPU, the pass-through. They have the advantage native GPU performance that because you utilize one GPU on your hypervisor in one instances. And then one direct gas usage is exclusive because only can utilize uh, to one instant. And then what is the disadvantage? The real device will be exposed to the gas. Uh, maybe it is related to the security. And then the other one is the, of course, you only use one GPU for one instant or gas. Okay, for the next, I will pass to my team, Arya. Okay, thank you, Ari. Uh, okay, here is the logical design if you want to uh, deploy a GPU pass-through on your OpenStack cluster. Can, can, can you guys see the laser, the pointer? Okay, here, here is the example. If you want to use a GPU, you, you have to make sure that you have enough uh, bandwidth to run high-performance computing because high-performance computing is aggregating uh, big compute resources to uh, solve complex calculations for scientists. And here, uh, your GPU will be on the OpenStack compute, so you don't need a uh, GPU on your OpenStack controller. Okay, this is how it looks like on your instance perspective. Let's uh, pay attention to the GPU. So, to make the GPU available to your instance, first things you have to blacklist the NVIDIA driver so your host operating system will not consume it. So it will be exclusively available for the virtual machines or instance. And the other notes, if you want to provide high performance computing to your scientists, um, if you want to boost the performance you will have to have a smart NIC. Commonly, it comes from NVIDIA. The, the product is called ConnectX. Uh, previously, it called Melanoc, but NVIDIA bought the company, so it now called NVIDIA ConnectX. It will provide you um, network interface card virtualizations, so you will have a uh, physical NIC performance on your virtual machine, but we will not uh, focus on that. We only focus on the GPU, how the GPU can be consumed through the PCI pass-through. And then after the GPU is available on the instance, you can use your favorite or your preference high-performance computing or artificial intelligence software. Okay, this is um, a summary of the steps, how you can provide GPU pass-through to your OpenStack cluster, but it's not going to be detailed because I believe you guys are expert in understanding configurations. So this is the summary. What the first thing you have to do is preparing the GPU host or the um, host operating system. Make sure you enable the Intel VTD features or AMD V. So the CPU will able to uh, pass through the I.O. devices like PCIe. And then you have to enable the IM, IO MMU so your virtual machines can access 
directly on your uh, RAM, random access memory. And before we go into the next step, we have to collect the vendor and product ID. So NVIDIA has their own ID, AMD has their own ID, you have to uh, look it up. It can be looked up on the internet. And the next step is configure Nova. You have to configure Nova on OpenStack controller and also in the compute side. What you need to do is assign PCI address. You can use PCI address or the another approach is using vendor and product ID. And make sure you enable the PCI pass-through filter scheduler on the Nova OpenStack controller. And the next steps. If you want to use cloud image, um, the GPU will not be available because the driver is not installed yet. So you have to uh, prepare the cloud image that has um, the driver. In this case, we are using NVIDIA. So you have to install the CUDA driver and the Qt neural network software. So the cloud image, it will be uh, ready to use. You can use Fiat Customize to install the required driver. And after you have the cloud image, you can start to create flavor. And the flavor require property. The property is PCI pass-through. So you can define how many uh, GPU that you can consume. For example, if you want to consume NVIDIA T4, two unit or four unit, you can define it um, any, uh, anything you want. And the last one is after you create flavor, you can use your GPU instance. Okay, this is how it looks like after you deploy the instance with a GPU pass through. This is an open in, oh, OpenStack instance, and this is the instance we show. We show using NVIDIA SMI. That's a comment to show the GPU that we have and the utilizations. In this case, uh, we are using, uh, we, we, we are passed through to NVIDIA Tesla T4. Okay, this is how you can fine tune your um, GPU host. The first one is NUMA. NUMA is very important because it will define uh, which memory is closest to the CPU and which PCI device is closest to the CPU. You want to make sure you configure the NUMA. And then huge pages. Um, you want to make sure that uh, the virtual machine uh, using huge patch to increase the memory speed. And then core isolations. You don't want to make your virtual machines um, fighting for resources with your uh, Nova compute. For example, uh, Nova compute services may, may, may be using the same CPU core with the instance. Because you don't want to do that, you, you have to do a CPU isolations so the Nova compute will not fight against each other to get the CPU resource. And the last one is PCIe pass-through. There is um, some, some approach. You can PCI pass-through a GPU, or the next one is for networking, SRIOV. OK, this is the most popular high-performance computing. The first one is OpenSPC. It has um, two backend, PBS Professional and Slarm. You can choose the preference. This is OpenSPC, and the next one is Open On Demand. 
scientists, they probably don't want to learn the common line because it's going to be high learning curve. So to make their life easy as scientists, we must provide um, dashboard so they can submit their um, software through the dashboard. Okay, this is exciting um, next generation technology. Uh, we were talking about uh, virtual GPU and PCIe pass-through, and this one is GPU over IP. So you don't have to need a GPU on your, um, so you don't have to have the CPU and GPU at the same machines. You can have your CPU machines in another machine and GPU machines on the other one. In this example, let's say you have an OpenStack cluster in Vietnam. The software is called Juice Labs. So GPU server is providing a GPU through the network. And you can consume it anywhere. For example, cloud provider A in Vietnam, you, you can consume um, in OpenStack cluster Vietnam. And even if I am in Indonesia, I want to consume the GPU. I just connect my VM to the OpenStack cluster in Vietnam that has a GPU. This is a breakthrough, I think, because you will have full uh, utilizations. OK, this is how it looks like when you are using GPU over IP. So the left one is the GPU server. You can take a look at the host name is Eric26. This machine has uh, six RTX 3090. And here in master one is my CPU machine. When we take a look at LSPCI, it shows only one RTX 3090. This is just an example. In my master, I have uh, one GPU. But I'm connecting to the GPU server here. When I run a GCY NVIDIA SMI, I can uh, obtain six NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090. These GPU are coming from this um, GPU server. So you can uh, consume it from different machines. OK, um, from all of the GPU approach, which one is uh, the correct one for you? Maybe it's going to be different for each uh, company. So you have to uh, decide it wisely. OK, maybe uh, let's go first to GPU virtualizations. So this is uh, the best way to share GPU within the same host. If you want to maximize the utilizations of GPU, you can make a fragment of your GPU. For example, one GPU, you can share it to six virtual machines. And there is two approach. If you are going with AMD GPU, they have a solution called MX GPU. They do not require license, but in NVIDIA, they be called um, NVIDIA vGPU. This, as Ari said, this require license. And the next one is PCI pass-through. This is how to obtain the maximum performance because the GPU is exclusive, exclusively available to single instance. And one GPU for one virtual machine. And the next one is my favorite, GPU over IP. This going to give you maximized utilizations because one GPU can share across many VMs through the internet protocol. So it, it can be remotely accessed GPU across hosts or even across data center. OK, this is the references if you guys want to read the detail. And this is the credit, and image and icon is from flaticon.com. 
and thank you to the organizer of an infra user group Vietnam. It's been a pleasure to be here. We visit uh, Vietnam for five days. Uh, we had two days in Sapa. It was a beautiful place, great place. Definitely we'll come back again. Okay, I think uh, that's all from our presentations. If you guys have a questions, please feel free to ask. Okay. Uh, okay for your sharing. Uh, không biết anh chị ở đây có ai muốn đặt câu hỏi cho các diễn giả không ạ? Yes, please. Uh, I have one question. Um, I think uh, we can use, uh, in, in my case, we don't use uh, GPU card for the AI, uh, you know, uh, uh, computing. We use uh, GPU for the media processing, you know, application. So, um, that's said that we, we uh, for example, we encode or transcode the video and for the uh, you know uh, big application we need to have a lot of you know gpu to serve the the end user let's say that uh, live streaming and uh, for for some some events you know we have thousand users they stream to the system they stream on internet and we need to you know chant code the video right so um in that case we cannot you know uh part through the the card we need to use something like a virtual line because we, do, we need to have something like a, a, a container with, you know, GPU. So, so do you have ever tried that, you know, uh, application before? Can you share your experience? Uh, thank you for the questions. Um, we don't have the experience in consuming GPU uh, from container, but I think that's an interesting topic. But we, we yeah, I think that's interesting case uh, using GPU for live streaming. Um, I think it's better to uh, use Docker for small um, small deployment. Yeah, I think that's my, my our answer. We don't have experience in live streaming. Okay, maybe I will add uh, more. Uh, as I know, the GPU is the more better than CPU to the uh, parallel task if you want to use that GPU to your uh, purposes. I think it will be good uh, unless you, you will do serial, you can still use the CPU. But we still don't have uh, any experience for that uh, any kind of uh, container workload. What about, have you ever tried a virtualization with the uh, uh, AMD card? AMD card, not yep. yet, only uh, NVIDIA. But um, my suggestion is if, if you need live streaming, maybe you can use um, consumer grade GPU uh, because I think that's enough because uh, NVIDIA data center GPU is probably uh, way more pricey than the consumer grade GPU for your uh, use case. You mean, you mean that we should use consumer GPU card? Yeah, I think that's, that's okay. It's better than the, we use... Uh, to uh, save the cost. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I think the NVIDIA have variety of type for the GPU, but we use for the data workload. Mainly we use for the high performance computing, uh, but for as an area set, you can use the consumer grade to the utilize the GPU. Yeah, I see. Um, I think for the GPU virtualization or part two, if the the card is too big, sometimes if you part two is will be quite useless because the one one user cannot you know utilize all the resource of the GPU. So sometimes we need to need to virtualize it as well, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other question? Uh, maybe you can ask uh, uh, with Vietnam language. My, my moderator will translate if you want. 
À, vâng, các anh chị có thể đặt câu hỏi bằng tiếng Việt thì em sẽ cố gắng translate ạ, nếu mà khả năng của em. Uh, okay, so I have some question too. So uh, uh, I quite curious about the license of Nvidia. Like uh, if I I know like they had a feature like to virtualize the Nvidia card. So if we buy like maybe like A10 or maybe A100, so the like how many like we buy the physical one, but does we uh, buy for the A10 license for the VGPU cards? Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, as I know, the license model is the perpetual, and you can buy it uh, quantity one only one. You can buy only one, and you can fragment your GPU. They have a table matrix. If you buy one license, you can how many you can share the virtual GPU to your instance. Anyone? Uh, no. Uh, so I has uh, like uh, in the past, but a long time ago, uh, we has UK use uh, VDIs like the virtual desktop, uh, and we provide for I don't know uh, maybe like I just forgot this. They use uh, graphic software for this, and uh, the problem is we cannot split the cock. Even like uh, I read the the spec, it's uh, supported, but. Uh, I think uh, and the NVIDIA requires for a 10 license for that. So that is the thing I'm not sure. So that's why we had to buy like a physical PC for for, for their department. Okay, uh, so the limitation is you want to custom the clock, you must be buy the 10 license, right? Okay. Yeah, correct. Okay. Uh, actually, we don't know about the license modeling. Maybe you can ask the NVIDIA sales. Yeah, that is the thing that we don't like. Uh, we don't know when we buy the the soft, the, the hardware. Okay, maybe uh, if you are required um, license with Nvidia, the other way is using GPU over IP um, from Juice Labs. Uh, actually, you can check out their GitHub GitHub.com/slash Juice Mine Labs. So. It will give you the same output as virtual GPU, but it requires network uh, bandwidth. Okay, so uh, the second question uh, is: uh, I'm quite curious about, uh, like, uh, sometimes uh, the requirements of the, the uh, computing, like, it just need more cards than just one. So, like, there is support any kind of feature. So, if we want to uh, process something with GPU, we can spread the, the calculation to many cards. So, does this uh, HPC you, you say is support for, for this? Yes, correct. That is actually how the high performance computing, especially the open SPC, you can choose a Slurm uh, workload manager. So, it will help you to schedule the calculations across different hosts. So, you need uh, multi uh, parallel. Okay, so uh, I don't have much experience in this field. So, uh, could you give uh, me some examples about the use case USPC in your experience? In, in our experience, we were only giving the infrastructure and then the the scientists working on it, so we don't have uh, the perspective on how the uh, scientists using it. Um, but from what I know, um, there is a library called OpenMPI, so it will help them to um, to spread the process, so they can run parallel process across different hosts, uh, doing the same exact job, but on across different hosts. Uh, yes, so I had uh, the other question is uh, the uh, car is really expensive like uh, A100 is cost like a 10 or maybe 20,000 per car. So uh, if we invest to a physical server with like 10 cars, it's really expensive. So, uh, but if we serve this, uh, this server for only one team or one department, it's really like uh, expensive for invest. So, how we can like if we just buy like one or two server with a lot of cards, so how we can like share it to a lot of teams can use together. So uh, do you has like uh, uh, solutions for this? Okay, so 
to make all department can be able to consume the GPU, you mean, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, I think the best options now we have is GPU over IP. Because if we choose vGPU, we require more cost because we have to purchase license. Um, I think the best options for now is uh, GPU over IP. But, but you have to make sure your, your uh, network bandwidth is enough. The requirement is 300 uh, megabytes per second. Uh, OK. So I have one more question about uh, um, GPU over IP. As you mentioned, that uh, it required 300 megabytes per second network, yes, right? Yes, that's recommended. So what, what is the um, workload or, or the application can use for that? Because uh, in case we need to have very low latency application, can it support? Yes, it can support. Actually, in the demonstrations, they show playing cyberpunk. So they have uh, Windows virtual machines, and they are able to run the cyberpunk video games. So also, it will work on um, PyTorch and either uh, ResNet and other um, AI or machine learning software. Can you go back to the uh, slide showing the GPU over IP, please? So here we have uh, we have the uh, client which are with GPU, right? And we can utilize GPU over internet. Oops, sorry, is correct? Yes, correct. It can. So the, the the idea is able to consume GPU over internet protocol or IP. Mm. And we need to have. I think maybe the application need to have a special software stack to support this, right? Yes, uh, correct. Uh, so if you want to consume over the internet protocol, you have uh, run Juicify, and then the software that you want to run, if you want to run Cyberpunk, you can just Juicify uh, Cyberpunk.exe, that's for example. So this is the client required to consume this um, GPU server. What about the high-level application, such as, um, let's say that, something like a media, Software on that guy. Um, yes, uh, 3D they, uh, design. Yes, like that. that's also possible. Even they are playing video games using this uh, Juicify and software like AutoCAD definitely would run on this VG, uh, GPU over IP. Okay, it look good. I think it's, it's, it's but, exciting, right? But there is one limitation. This this uh, Juice Labs is open source. But if you want to use it for commercial, they have it in their license. You have to um, make a contract with them. OK. I see. <laughs> OK, as I know that, I just uh, sharing with you, uh, for the NVIDIA, if you want to have license, they, they have two kind of license, uh, two, two fees. You need to pay beside the uh, hardware cost. First, first thing is license to enable the GPU. And then you need to pay for the support fee. And the support fee only charge five years one time. You need to buy five years. Yes, Mark. So we just calculate that for one, uh, one virtual machine, we use a virtualization card. Uh, one year, we need to pay about more than $1,000 per, per instant. Yeah, that's the same with you. OK, thank you. OK, so uh, uh, không biết là anh chị nào còn câu hỏi cho các diễn giả không ạ? Can you uh, say a little about uh, OpenStack community in uh, Indonesia? Oh, yeah, uh, good question. Uh, thank you for your question. Okay, in Indonesia, OpenStack is uh, very popular and famous in Indonesia that because from the small medium enterprise, government, they're using the OpenStack. But uh, there are type of the user. The first one is the user who use the upstream OpenStack. So they, they coming from the OpenStack Foundation. And then the other one is the use the OpenStack from the distribution, like a Red Hat OpenStack, and then the Juju from the Canonical. Related to the community, 
We regularly, regularly doing the meetup every month, and then we have a one annual meeting like the Vietnam User Group uh, do. But unfortunately, for this year, we cannot make it. Uh, maybe next year we will uh, have the event like uh, Vietnam do. That's all I think. Any other question? Okay, uh, nếu anh chị không còn câu hỏi khác thì em nghĩ là mình chúng ta có thể kết thúc cái phiên trình bày tại đây. Uh, if uh, no one in this room had another question for the speakers, oh, I think that we can end this session. So maybe uh, if you want to contact with the uh, speakers, uh, we already we will provide the slides and the contact uh, in the fan page. Okay. Yeah. Uh, once again, uh, before we close, can we take a selfie together? Because this is the closing closing presentations. Uh, okay. Okay. Dạ vâng, chắc là nhờ anh chị uh, chúng ta lên bục để làm một kiểu ảnh. À, chúng ta ngồi ngồi tập trung một chút về để. Oh, uh, maybe uh, just do video. Opening Friday, Vietnam 2023. It's wrapped up. Okay, everyone, thank you for coming and thank you for having us. Thank you.